he's the oldest human specimen we have that is so complete. He's so well preserved. He continues to generate this body of information. He may well be the most studied human being in history. Frozen for five millennia, he looked like he died yesterday. Then scientists found the arrow in his back. September 19th, 1991. Two German tourists are hiking through the melting ice of the Italian Alps when they spot what looks like a climbing accident. What they're about to find will make them the most reluctant millionaires in archaeological history. A man's body is jutting out of the glacier, his skin dark and leathery from exposure. They assume he's been there maybe a few weeks, maybe a month at most. They have no idea they've just made the most important archaeological discovery of the century. What happened next was pure chaos. Eight different rescue teams descended on the site over five days. And here's the crazy part. They had no idea they were destroying evidence of history's most perfect murder. They used everything from ice picks to pneumatic drills to hack this guy out of his frozen tomb. Even Reinhold Messner, the legendary mountaineer, showed up to see what all the fuss was about. But here's where it gets weird. Austria and Italy immediately started fighting over who owned the body. They measured the exact GPS coordinates down to the centimeter and discovered he was found exactly 92.56 meters inside Italian territory. Think about that. Austria lost a 5,300-year-old murder victim by less than the length of a football field. Imagine explaining that to your parliament. The tourists who found him, Helmut and Erika Simon, spent the next 17 years in court fighting for their finder's fee. And get this, 12 years after the discovery, two more people came forward claiming they had found the body first. One woman even claimed she had spat on the corpse to mark it with her DNA as proof. Yes, you heard that right? Someone actually licked a 5,000-year-old dead body and thought that would hold up in court. But none of that mattered once scientists got their hands on what they would eventually call Utzi, the Iceman. For 10 years, researchers poked and prodded and studied every inch of this ancient man. They analyzed his clothes, his tools, his last meal. They knew he was around 5,300 years old. They knew he died violently, but they completely missed the smoking gun. And when they finally found it, it was so obvious they wanted to quit science forever. In 2001, a routine x-ray revealed something that made everyone's blood run cold. There, lodged deep in Utzi's left shoulder, was a 13mm flint arrowhead. Someone had shot this man in the back and left him to die on a mountain pass. The arrowhead sliced through a major artery. Utzi would have bled out in minutes, maybe less, but here's what kept scientists awake at night. This wasn't some random accident or hunting mishap. The arrow hit him from behind at an upward angle. Someone was below him on the mountain, hidden, waiting for the perfect shot. And then they found the other evidence, fresh cuts on his hands and wrists, defensive wounds. DNA analysis revealed blood from four different people on his gear. Stop for a second and picture this, four different people, one on his knife blade, two on a single arrowhead, which means this guy killed two people with the same arrow walked over to their bodies and calmly pulled it out to use again, and a fourth person's blood on his coat, probably from carrying a wounded companion. Utzi hadn't just been murdered, he'd been in a running battle for his life. 5,300 years ago, long before the pyramids were built, before written history even existed, a man is fleeing through the Alps. He's wounded, exhausted, carrying a dying friend. His enemies are closing in. He makes it to what he thinks is safety, a high mountain pass where he can rest and tend to his wounds. But they followed him. The arrow that killed Utzi was fired from such close range that the shaft shattered on impact, leaving only the head buried in his shoulder. His killer stood over him long enough to retrieve the valuable arrow shaft, but left the stone point behind because it was too deep to extract without tools. But wait because the murder mystery was just the beginning. In 2012, scientists made a discovery that shouldn't have been possible, a discovery that broke every rule of biology they thought they knew. Utzi's blood was still there, not just traces or residue, but actual intact functional blood cells, the oldest complete human blood cells ever found. After 5,300 years of being frozen solid, his blood looked like it had been drawn yesterday. But the story gets even stranger. 
For 18 years after Utzi's discovery, scientists thought his stomach had completely disappeared. 18 years. That's like losing your car keys for two decades and finding them in your pocket. Then in 2009, a CT scan revealed something impossible. The ice pressure had pushed his stomach up under his rib cage, perfectly preserved, still containing his final meal. Inside his stomach, researchers found ibex meat that he had eaten just two hours before his death. Two hours! They could identify the exact species of grain he'd consumed, the wild vegetables he'd gathered. They could literally reconstruct his last day on Earth, meal by meal. But here's what will blow your mind. Everything we thought we knew about what Utzi looked like was wrong. For 30 years, museums around the world displayed reconstructions showing a pale-skinned man with long, flowing hair. 30 years of school field trips, documentaries, and textbooks. Then in 2023, advanced DNA analysis revealed the truth. Utzi had dark skin and was completely bald. Basically, science had been whitewashing a 5,000-year-old man this entire time. Utzi wasn't alone in the ice. In fact, he was just the beginning. Because what scientists found next makes a 5,000-year-old murder look almost normal. June 21, 2022. A gold miner named Travis Mudry is working a claim in Canada's Yukon Territory when his excavator hits something soft. Something that shouldn't be soft in permanently frozen ground. He shuts off his machine and starts digging by hand. What he uncovers is Nuncho Ga big baby animal in the local Trondek Huechen language, a baby woolly mammoth that died 30,000 years ago and was preserved so perfectly that she still had her trunk, her tail, her ears, even her internal organs, the most complete mammoth ever found in North America. But Nunchoga was nothing compared to what Russian scientists found in 2024. Deep in Siberia's Batagaika Crater, a place locals call the Mouth of Hell, permafrost has been melting for decades, revealing treasures from the Ice Age. This is where they found Yana, a baby mammoth so perfectly preserved that scientists called her the best specimen ever discovered. Yana still had her head, her trunk, all four legs, and every internal organ intact after 50,000 years. Her preservation was so complete that when scientists extracted samples, they found liquid blood. Actual liquid blood from an animal that died when Neanderthals still walked the earth. In 2018, Russian scientists made an even more impossible discovery. They found a 42,000-year-old foal, a baby horse from the Ice Age, buried in Siberian permafrost. When they cut into its body, dark red liquid poured out. Not ancient residue, not mineral deposits. Blood, fresh flowing blood from an animal that died when your ancestors 1,500 generations ago were still learning to make fire. These discoveries are rewriting everything we thought we knew about death, about preservation, about what's scientifically possible. Scientists have now successfully stimulated biological processes in mammoth cells that are over 34,000 years old. Some cellular functions can apparently survive millennia of freezing. The finds keep coming. In 2020, researchers discovered the first complete cave bear carcass ever found with soft tissues intact. Not just bones, skin, muscle, internal organs, even its nose. A creature that's been extinct for 15,000 years, preserved like it died yesterday. Woolly rhinoceroses with their horns still attached. Wolves with their fur still thick and glossy. Lions from an age when they roamed the Arctic. Each discovery pushes the boundaries of what we thought was possible. And now, companies like Colossal Biosciences think they can bring them back. We're literally three years away from real-life Jurassic Park, except with mammoths instead of dinosaurs. They've already created the first induced stem cells from Asian elephant tissue. They've made 45 different genetic edits using CRISPR technology, slowly transforming elephant DNA into something closer to their woolly mammoth cousins. Their goal? The first mammoth-elephant hybrid calves by 2027. But here's the question that keeps scientists awake at night. If we can bring back creatures that died 50,000 years ago, what does that mean for death itself? What does it mean for us? Because here's the cruel irony that'll keep you up at night. 
The same climate change that's revealing these perfectly preserved specimens is also destroying the conditions that preserved them in the first place. We're in a race against time to study history before history melts away forever. But there's another layer to this story that's tearing the scientific community apart. Many of these discoveries are actually grave robbing. Indigenous communities across the Arctic are watching scientists extract their ancestors from the ice without permission, without consultation, without respect for cultural beliefs about disturbing the dead. The Trondek Huichen people in Canada have to fight to maintain involvement in research on specimens found in their traditional territory. Every preserved creature tells a story of violence, of desperation, of final moments frozen in time. Utsi shot in the back while fleeing his enemies. Baby mammoths separated from their herds and trapped in mud. Cave bears dying alone in the endless Arctic winter. But they also tell stories of resilience, of survival against impossible odds, of life so strong that not even 50,000 years of ice could completely erase it. Utsi's killer thought he had erased his victim from history. He never imagined that his crime would become the most thoroughly investigated murder in human history, that the man he left for dead would become the most studied human being who ever lived. Every night in laboratories from Bolzano to Moscow to Montreal, scientists are still uncovering secrets from the ice, still solving murders that happened before civilization began, still bringing the dead back to life, one strand of ancient DNA at a time. And somewhere in the ice, there are stories waiting that will make Otsi's tale look simple. Stories of love and betrayal, of survival and extinction, of creatures and people we can't even imagine. The ice remembers everything, and it's starting to give up its secrets.